Alright guys, so this is what I wanted to show you. Um, I had a question, so last year I, uh, I left all the honey supers on this hive and um, I, was, I wanted to know, well, when they ate all the honey, what would they do with the comb? Because when they drew the comb out, they drew it out, drew it out larger. The cells, um, I don't know if you can see, but the cells are are larger than you would you would see for for worker brood. So I was wondering if they were going to reconfigure the wax or if they were going to reuse the wax for honey. And uh, come to find out, they used it for almost all drone brood. So if we get these guys to move. Okay, so a couple things about drone brood. One, the Varroa prefer the drone brood because the cells are larger and they can reproduce more readily uh, on the drones. Secondly, the workers are less apt to remove drones that have been infested with mites. Uh, the workers will remove worker brood that have been um, infested with mites, but they haven't been shown to do that for drone brood. So what you get is basically the perfect you know, storm for, for Varroa to reproduce inside the drone cells. Um, they can reproduce more of them in there and the workers aren't gonna, are gonna leave them alone. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling out some of these, these drones. Uh, I don't know if this is focusing. But um, I'm just looking at just looking at them and trying to see if I see any mites. And if I do, that's a that would be bad. That would, that would mean that I have a pretty bad infestation. Um, and uh, my treatment plan then would be I would brush all the bees off of these frames. You can see there's there's drone brood on either side here. And uh, I would just take this whole frame, and I got two of them in here actually that are, that are loaded with drone brood, and um, just put them in a plastic bag and throw them in the freezer overnight. And what that'll do is that'll actually kill all the, all the mites. It'll kill the drone brood too, but we, we don't need drones as much as we need worker bees. Um, and uh, they'll clean out all the dead, all the dead drones and they'll um, and the mites will go along with it and that'll do uh, that'll do a lot to kind of keep them at bay keep the the mites from from reproducing and you know this is just kind of what you do you just kind of pull some out you can use an uncapping knife I don't, I don't have one so I'm just using this this pick and I'm just taking a look So that's the tip. If you're going to be running foundationless, um, and you leave the uh, the honey in over the winter, uh, you know those frames are, will make great uh, drone brood traps. And you know, I mean, they sell they sell drone brood foundation and and um, and frames just for this reason, so that you can trap varroa. And um, you know, if you're foundationless, then you have a lot more variety in your comb to uh, to to, uh, to play with. So, so this year, that's half of my my uh, integrated pest management um, plan for uh, keeping the, the varroa at bay. I'm going to um, keep an eye on the levels, and if I need to treat, uh, I'm going to freeze uh, the drone brood. I I might in the middle of summer uh, apply some um, formic acid treatments. And in the winter, I'm going to do the oxalic acid. And, uh, you know, those three things are, that's my plan for Varroa. Uh, everybody who's a beekeeper should have a plan for Varroa. Um, even if it's treatment-free, you should have some kind of integrated pest management solution to, uh, to keep them at bay.